Hey, how's it going? Hope everybody is doing well. This is Coach Cookie, your life and relationship coach. Thanks for tuning in to today's episode of Rising Higher. Here we chit chat about life, relationships, and I'll give you some snippets for success to not only help you to survive, but to thrive. In today's episode, I want to focus on the benefits of positive parenting. But before we get into that, let's look at some of the high points from last week's episode entitled Mental Health Journey of an Evangelist. I was motivated to discuss my mental health journey due to hearing so many stories about how people were struggling with mental health. And the high points from that episode is that just because it looks like a person is living the perfect life, you never know what they're dealing with. And at the same time, you never know what's going to pretty much take them over the edge. Everyone deals with mental health differently. So it looks one way with one person, but totally different with another person. The main point is to know that if you're going through a mental health crisis, understand that there's nothing wrong with getting help. Getting help means that you just need a different perspective or a different view to help you make sense out of your thought process. If this is something that you're dealing with, you may want to go back and check out that episode. Okay, today on Cookie's Commentary, I wanted to take a minute and talk about how I feel social media is destroying our lives. First off, Let me say that I'm not a big social media person. I never really have been. I just started working with social media when I decided to do this channel. But I just started working with a married couple in one of my sessions. And after working with them for a while, realized that the root of their problem was social media. They are so addicted to social media that it's really destroying their marriage. So what happens is that people spend so much time on social media looking at what seems to be positive pictures. This makes a lot of people feel dissatisfied with their own lives and some may even become jealous. This causes problems in your relationship and it can lead to mental health issues just like such as depression or anxiety. Just take a moment and think about your own life. You take pictures of you and your family, but deep down you're dealing with some serious issues with the relationship with your significant other or maybe even with your children. But in reality, no one will ever know that based on your pictures. Remember, when you're dealing with social media in general, they're only going to want to show you what they want you to see. What you see most of the time is not real. Stop stressing out about putting pressure on yourself to be like someone else that's really fake. Science shows that more people that spend a lot of time on social media suffer from higher rates of depression. In some cases, the depression gets so bad that people eventually commit suicide. And I hate to say, but the sad part about the entire thing is that you would never know someone was depressed and needed help just by looking at their pictures on social media. Um, I feel like individuals who are so addicted to social media don't have the coping mechanism to ask for help from their friends, mother, father, husband, doctor, but they depend on social media to help them give them validation that they need. I know it's going to be difficult for some people to break these addictive habits, but it's important to take a break from social media and develop real life relationships with your family and friends. This is going to be really important because if you don't, you're going to destroy yourself or you're going to destroy your relationships. If you're struggling with a behavior addiction and need help with some coping skills, let's talk about it. Contact me at heycoachcookie at gmail.com. Also, I would love to hear your comments and how you feel about this topic. I'm sure anything that you would offer would be very helpful. So today on Keeping It Real, I got a question from a lady by the name of Kimberly and she asked, Hey Coach Cookie, I'm married to a narcissist and we have three children together. I have decided to stay in the relationship. What can I do to make this relationship work? This is very different because most people that are in a toxic relationship with a, a per- someone with a personality disorder, usually they get out. Okay, so of course, staying in a relationship with a narcissist is not a healthy and not the most not what most people actually do. However, I do want to say this: there are some people who have children, finance problems. You know, it's their culture or maybe even re- religious beliefs. So there are some people out here who don't have a choice and are forced to stay in a in a toxic relationship with a narcissist. So first off, let me just say I understand and it's not my place to judge or decide uh, what it is that you want to do or for whatever reason you're going to do it for. When you stay in a relationship, you have to learn and you have to know that you have to endure who the narcissist really is. For example, in order to keep your sanity, you will have to just have basic conversations. 
about, uh, you know, just general things like the weather, um, you, uh, what's what do you what, what would you like for dinner? Um, the more conversations that you have that have to do with your emotions, because more than likely you'll get hurt because they have no empathy, and eventually those conversations turn into arguments. You may want to look into therapy for you and your children. Join a support group, volunteer for the community, and get involved in other events that you would get excited about. Make friends uh, with individuals that will cultivate empathy and understanding and start spending more time with these friends. Doing some of these things of your own will not resolve the problems that you have at home with dealing with a narcissistic person, but it will help you become more resilient with how you deal with it. My listeners out there, I would love to hear your idea on this topic and what are some of your things that you would recommend for Kimberly. I'm sure she would very much appreciate it. Okay, remember in my first video entitled How We End Up in Toxic Relationships and How to Break the Cycle, there was a section in that episode where I discussed the main reason why we attract toxic people. Because as a child, we are emotionally detached because our parents ignored our emotions if you missed that episode, you're going to want to go back, listen to it, and check it out. I want to take a minute to remind my parents that you want to make sure not to repeat the same cycle with your child that you went through as a child. This episode is going to provide you with some tips to assist you develop positive parenting skills. So as a parent, your job is to nurture, protect, and guide your children so that they can have a good start in life, which prepares them for independence. So as your child grows and develops, there are many things you can do to help your child. It's important to be sensitive and responsive to your children in order to help build a positive, healthy relationship together. Part of parenting is understanding your child's needs at the moment and providing that in an effective way. It, that's really hard to do, especially in our society, especially with this generation parents having so many distractions like working long hours, not getting enough sleep due to outside stressors, and spending too much time on mobile devices. This takes away from the parents being sensitive and responsive to their child or to their children. As a result, these children feel hurt, rejected, ignored. They may have more emotional outbursts and may not feel comfortable going to their parents because it may cause more stress for them. So the child feels alone and doesn't really know how to express their feelings. On the other hand, those children who create a strong emotional bond with their parents, they feel safe to explore, learn, and relate to their parents and others. As adults, those children are able to cope with daily challenges. But it's never too late to start building a healthier, more positive relationship with your child. Even if things have gotten strained and stressful, it's still not too late to start building a healthier relationship. Remember parents, it's important to understand that your child needs your attention and wants your recognition. Remember to communicate to your child and let them know that they are valuable, they're important. That For older children, let them know that you are committed to building a stronger relationship with them and helping them to be successful and that you're on their side. Sometimes it can be tough to respond with sensitivity during tantrums, arguments, or other challenging times with your kids. Parents, listen to me. Don't get upset and respond by being irritable or aggressive yourself. Children will mimic that behavior and when they do that, the negative cycle continues. When your child has tantrums, outbursts, Remember, this is only because they have learned that behavior from, I hate to say it, more than likely they learned it, they learned it from you and probably didn't realize it. So it may take some time to change that behavior. So parents, remember, you have to be good self-regulators because your children are watching you. You're not only trying to regulate your own emotions in the moment, but helping and teaching your child to manage their own emotions and behavior. When you engage with your child in a positive manner, you are building self-esteem, confidence, and they learn self-control. This will set a positive path that they will develop coping skills to help them with problem solving as a child. And believe it or not, it will continue in their adulthood lives. If this is something that you are struggling with when it comes to dealing with your child, let's talk about it. Contact me at heycoachcookie at gmail.com so we can talk about it. Let's see if you could benefit from one-on-one -on -one coaching. Your first 30 minutes are free. My inbox is always open. Feel free to contact me online, Facebook, Instagram at Rising Higher Podcast. To all my listeners, I would love to hear your thoughts on this topic. Also, I want to be able to bring content that meets your needs. So if you have any questions that you would like for me to answer or if you have a topic 
that you would like for me to do an episode on, please let me know. This is Coach Cookie reminding you to love yourself first as we rise higher together. Thank you. Talk to you soon.